Hi, Zop is an easy way to build native apps for your mobile workforce. Today, let's look at how do we build an Android and iOS application for a battery swapping operations in the mobility industry. All it's going to take is 15 minutes. By the end of it, we'll have like a working application with which we can execute this operation. Let's get started. What is involved in a battery swapping operation? So the user who is the personnel who swaps a battery looks at a new battery swapping request, which we'll call new. Then they start traveling towards the location of the bike, which is the travel step. Then they arrive at the bike's location. They swap the battery and during swap the battery, we can scan the old battery QR code. We can scan the new battery, which we are installing over there. So that we know which battery goes into which particular bike. And finally, we take some pictures to make sure uh, that acts as the proof of the battery swapping itself. And finally, we complete the task and we might want to push all the data we have actually collected to the internal data warehouse so that all the analytics operation can happen. Right. So this is a very simple workflow and this is what we're going to build today. So let's get started. So anything and everything on job works on top of workflows. So in order for us to execute this particular workflow, we'll create a new workflow in the job dashboard. So workflow is a series of steps connected by the transitions. As you can see, we have first couple of steps already available, which is a new and completed. But in our case, we need four of them. So we're going to add a couple of them. So we create a new step now and we'll create one more. You can tell it this. So we have a new and we have the next one and we have the next one. Let's go back. Yeah, we have third and finally we'll connect the fourth. All right, so we have four steps actually done. Now the base blueprint is actually ready. So then we can start configuring each of these steps with the details we need. So the first step is new. So I'm gonna click on it. So this shows the mobile application screen, which should be used by the personnel on the ground, right? So this, app, this mobile screen is currently empty and we can start creating the UI view by using the UI components provided by Zop. So in this example, we want to show what is the details of the task, what is the battery percentage, and what is the location. So we can get started. So I want to show some details about what this task is. So I drag and drop a text component, and I can edit this component saying, I'll say this called instructions. And I can provide the instruction saying, this is a battery swapping task. All right. Done. So next we want to show the battery percentage. So battery percentage can also be shown in a text component. I'll drag and drop my text here and I can say this is battery percentage and I, I don't need main text. And because the battery percentage is different for every single uh, order or every single task, we might want to pass this information dynamically at the time of task creation, right? So that's where Zot has an ability for you to create your own data fields. So data fields is like a database for the application you're actually creating. Zot by default provides a set of data, which is which corresponds to a lot of system data, like what time the task is created, what is the account ID, what are the usernames, the team details, what are the credentials of the logged in user, the current location, etc. But for us to pass something like battery percentage, we need to create something custom, which is specific to this workflow. So we can create that by going back and click on configure data fields. You can click on create new data field. This can be your own custom data field. So we'll call this battery percentage. All right. So I'll use the number for this. And this data is collected as an input when the task is created. So I'm going to check this box. And this input is actually mandatory. Yeah, so if it is not available certain times, you can leave the same to someone not gonna make this mandatory. So I'll create this. So now I have a new field called battery percentage. So now I can open the screen again and show the battery percentage over here. So I remove this, I enter the data, I open task, data, battery percentage, and I save. So battery percentage is shown over here, which is a number. So I'm gonna use a percentage symbol at the end of it. Now, whatever the battery percentage we pass at the time of task creation, it'll appear over here. So the next one is the location of the customer. 
Similarly, location of the customer is also an information which we need to pass at the time of task creation. So we'll create another data field for that. Let's say uh, by location. And there is a specific location data model which has the ability to convert a text address into a latitude and longitude and latitude and longitude into text address. It's a composite component which can store all this information. So I'll leave the empty for now, I'll leave it empty for now. And this also will be collected at the time of task creation. But this input will be mandatory because the person needs to travel to the particular location. So I'm gonna make this mandatory create. Now I can go in and I can show the location probably in the text address format. So I'll say this is the bike address. And here I can use data, the bike location. I'm gonna choose the address. So the first screen, I'm simply going to show the text info, text address information so the person understands where they need to go. Now our first step is done. So our first screen is done. We can go back and start configuring the next one. So the next one, if you remember, is the travel situation, right? So we also want to call the movement as start. So we'll name that. So instead of next, I'm going to change this to start. And when I click start, so here the button also changes to start. So this way the user knows that they have to click that button to move to the next step. So here we open the next step, which is that travel step. So in the travel step, we want to mainly show the address and the map location. So similar to the last screen, we're gonna show the text address, which is by address. And we will replace it with the bike location address. But apart from the simple text address, now I can show the map location so that the user can have, have a turn by turn navigation. So I'll drag a map and I'll drag and drop a map component. And it shows the default location based on the default values, but I can always change them to the bike location latitude. And I can change this to bike location longitude. All right, so whatever location we pass at the time of task creation will be shown over here in the map location. And the user will be able to get turn by turn navigation based on this. So I call this by location. Probably make it slightly bigger. Perfect. I think this is fine. Then we move on to, so we'll probably call this arrived. And then we move on to the swap battery state. So here it's known as completed. So I'm gonna rename this to swap battery. And swap battery is quite typical. So we have few information like validate the bike number. So we can ask, we can show the bike number so that the person knows uh, what bike they're looking for. Scan the old battery, scan the new battery and take some pictures and collect some notes. So first step, I'm gonna show the bike number. So bike number. Unfortunately, we don't have a field to add bike number, so we'll create one. Say bike number. Let's collect this at the time of task creation. There's a text component, which is fine. I'll create. Now I can open. And here I can choose the bike number. All right, now we're sorted. So the next step is scanning the QR code, which is pasted on the old battery. So here we can use a QR scan component. So this scan component can read both QR codes and barcodes. So I'll say scan the old battery. And make it slightly bigger. And minimum we need to scan at least once. Maximum we need to scan at least once. Right? So this is so exactly one scan. It's one QR needs to be scanned for this particular case. So there is no default value. And whatever scanned data we collect, we need to store that in a specific location, like a specific data point so that we can use it for our analytics later. So that can be done again by clicking on save this data. And unfortunately, we don't have a data field here. So we can create a new data field. So I'll create one, I'll say old battery QR. And this input is collected at the time of execution. It's not provided at the time of creation. So we'll leave this unchecked so I could create. Now, whatever scanned value we collect here gets stored in this particular data field. So similarly, I'll use another one or not the map one. 
it is scan another one to scan the new battery main as I create another data field and say new battery QR done and this also needs one and one all right next we wanted to collect some images for the proof of swap so we'll use the camera component which is capable of uploading images through camera and gallery of the phone so let's see collect swap proofs uh, so we can we have a choice to allow only camera or only gallery so for example i'll check gallery and the user can only use camera to upload i'll say minimum one image and maximum 10 images uh, to be there and this also this data also needs to be saved somewhere so that we can use this uh, use these images so we don't have a data field again so i'm going to create one i'll call this battery swap proofs done so the last step we want to collect some notes so that the user can enter any information which uh, they want to convey so here i drag and drop an input component and i'll call this notes and i'll probably make this optional so that the if the user doesn't have anything to enter they can leave it as it is save this data new field and call this again oops notes all right cool and yeah so this screen is also done and the final step so we'll probably call this complete and the final step is completed uh, here I'm going to open and say that congratulations and I'll say this is a good job yeah similarly we can show any any other information we want over here right so that's it our app is ready oh we forgot to rename this step so just name this completed yeah our app is actually fully ready and it's ready for a stress test but before we do that if you remember we had one additional thing to do, which is push the data to your internal data warehouse. So how do we actually do that? So the way we do that in Zorp is that Zorp has an interface called actions in any of these transitions. So for example, once the user clicks on complete in the previous step, we want to push all the data that is collected before to an external API. So you click on complete and there is a provision called actions. So click on actions and we can use the rest api actions so rest api action will help you push data to any external api so in this case the it could be your internal data warehouse it could be a google spreadsheet or it could be an editable uh, base it could be anything for that matter so in the absence of it we're going to use a simple webhook url yeah so i'm going to copy i'll paste this url so i'll say oh, sorry the URL information is to go over here. So I'll say sample uh, our data publish. Right. Uh, I don't have any auth headers for this particular API, but we have. You can enter over that. Enter that. And we also have the ability to pass information. So I can write the body in JSON. So for example, I can say this is the you know task ID. I can provide this data as start data task start task ID not only this I'm gonna pass it in other information like uh, old QR and I can enter task dot data dot old battery QR and again I'll say new QR and to close these braces Task data dot new battery QR. Yeah, so our API integration is also done. So we just click save. Everything is good. Now we can start using an application. So all I have to do now is name this workflow. So we'll call this mobility or battery swapping app. Hit update. And finally, all I have to do is just hit publish. So the moment you hit publish, the app is actually fully ready for you to start using it. So you can scan these QR codes, download these all app from your Play Store or App Store, and log in with the credentials you used to log into the Zorp application. 
and go ahead and hit create tasks. The once you hit publish on the workflow, Zob automatically creates a provision for you to create tasks. You can create these tasks one by one by saying, you know, battery swapping app. It will automatically ask all the fields which you said needs to be collected at the time of task creation. Not only this, Zorb also provides an ability for you to create these tasks in bulk via a CSV upload. So you have a battery swapping app, there is a template CSV, you add those details and you can create tasks in thousands. At the same time, Zorb also creates a REST API, which you can use to programmatically create these tasks from any other external system. And that API also gets dynamically generated. So for the sake of this example, let's just create this task one by one. So I'm going to use the battery swapping app, choose a team. So teams and users are a provision which is provided by Zorp by default. So you have access control based uh, teams and users who can use a different task and you can structure your organization the way you actually want. So we'll not cover that in this video for the lack of for uh, brevity. So let's just create. So we'll provide a sample address. I'm going to address, enter an address which is near my location. I'll add a sample latitude and longitude. And we have the battery percentage. Let's say it's 12 percentage. Bike number is uh, AB1234. Right? So once this is done, all I have to do is just hit create. And the task will be assigned uh, to that particular user. All right, let's have a look at how our app works. So what we see here is a Zorb mobile app. You can download this from the App Store and also from the Play Store. Log in with your credentials and you're good to go. So here we some, see some of the older tasks, but the one we are interested in is a battery swapping task over here. So the moment you click on this, you'll be able to see the first screen of our app which is the battery swapping task instructions, the battery percentage we sent as an input, and the bike address we also provide as an input. I'm gonna hit start. The moment I hit start, I see the map location with the actual route. And if I want turn by turn navigation, I, all I have to do is just click this button to open Google Maps for the navigation purposes. So I'm gonna come back once I reach the location of the bike, I click SRI. I have the ability to scan the old and new battery QR codes. I'll take a sample QR code over here and I'll scan it. All right. So once it's scanned, I just submit. I have to scan the new QR code. Scan the next one. We're done. So we collect some image proofs as the proof of swapping. Like one image, two, three, I can upload multiple images. While the images are getting uploaded, I can add some notes. So, good. So once the images are uploaded, all I have to do is hit submit complete. That's it. Our task is done. All right. Now that we have executed our sample app, it's time to look at the data we have collected. So come back to the dashboard and here we'll be able to see the QR code, the old battery QR code which was collected, new battery QR code, the images we have collected as proofs, the nodes, everything available in real time. I can even download the images we have actually collected so that I can review them then and there. Apart from this, if you remember, we also wanted to push some of this information to an external API. So we'll go back to the webhook site and we can see that we have received a new webhook from the system which is the task ID, the old QR and new QR, which corresponds to the data we have actually collected. Now this is how we can push any information we have collected via Zorb to any external system in real time. So there it is. We have our battery swapping app ready and within 30 minutes, we're able to build the entire app, test it and go live. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for tuning in.